Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to I Tried It So You Didn't Have To. In today's video we're going to be looking at Makulu Linux. So Makulu Linux is number 74 on the DistroWatch rankings. It is based on Debian testing and Ubuntu long-term support. So it says it's a roll and release distribution. Now um, I'm not sure how it can be roll and release if it's based on an LTS. I assume it's using the LTS as a base and then their changes are roll and release on top of that. Um, so, um, but we'll give it a go, see how, how it looks. Now, the Makulu website, if we go to it, uh, there's a few versions available. So there's one called Lindos, which it says is built on our hybrid 2023 Ubuntu AI driven base. And we've got Shift. Uh, Shift is an extremely complex distro to build. Nothing like it exists anywhere. Uh, we're aware that some other distros can change the layout of their desktop in some form or other. Those are merely simply overlay theme changes or moving of a panel or dot. Shift takes it to another level. We don't just switch to a different layout. We completely remove the old one. The wallpapers, themes, icon sets, cursors, extensions, effects, panels, docs, etc. Again, it says uh, now with AI added, it doesn't actually say, I don't think, whether that's Debian or Ubuntu based. Uh, then there's Max. Uh, that says it's a beta, uh, but uh, and that's designed with Debian compatibility and running on, on the Cinnamon backend framework, utilizing multiple desktop layout features. But the one we're going to be looking at today is Makulu Lindos. Uh, so the download page isn't overly clever. So you've got Makulu Shift at the top, and, and it does have a video, which is kind of good. But uh, the links for downloading, you kind of have to look at the name here to see what it is. So this is Makulu Shift. And then if we go down here, uh, we've got Makulu Lindos. So you can click here for the uh, Makulu Lindos download. So if I've already done that. Um, if you want to follow along, um, just download that. As usual, I'll be doing it in a virtual machine. And I've started using KVM for my virtual machines, um, but you can also use VirtualBox as well. So I'm going to create a brand new virtual machine now. And I'm going to off local media and we'll Browse local and I've got Makulu windows there. It can't find the uh, operating system. We know it's Ubuntu based, so let's do Ubuntu and we'll do it off the long term support because it says it's based off that. Uh, we're going to give it uh, 8 gigabytes, I'm going to give it 4 cores. We're going to create a disk and we're going to call it. Makulu. And you can see it's popped up. We're now going to choose default option. You can see here it says due to massive compression used to compile the ISO, it takes a while to decompress. And this only happens on the live image. So uh, the live image takes a little bit of time to boot up. So here we are, we're in Makulu and It starts a video to start off with, so we're going to close that down. Um, it asks you which layout you want. Um, let's see if we can do something with the display. We can. It took a little while to get going. You see, I got an error popping up here. I'm going to close that, but has done it. You can change your theme to be Classic Lunar, Aero or Redstone. I'm just going to leave it as it is because we're going to install it. It's going to close this down and we're going to click the live installer. It says if asked for password use Makulu but I'm going to start the installation. And it's the standard um, installer that you get for a lot of distributions. So if we go here we can go British English and click next. Uh, where are you? I'm in the UK. Uh, choose the default keyboard layout and then because I'm in a virtual machine I'm just going to choose a raised disk and click next 
and then I'm going to set up my username. I'm going to call this Makulu. Uh, log in without asking for the password. Um, I'm not going to do that. I always use the password. It says use the same password for the administrator account. I am going to say yes to that um, because it's a test machine. And then summary, it's going to tell me what it's going to do. And all I'm going to do is click install and let it do its thing. And we'll come back once that's finished installing. So eventually it um, installed. It took a bit longer than some other distributions um, that I've tried, but um, if you're patient, uh, it will work. And all you have to do now is click restart now and click done. And now you can see that it's booted into Makulu. So we're going to select the first option. You can see it's messed up the display again. So we're going to have to redo the display settings. Again, I got this message about, um, I'm not sure what this GD bus um, error is. I'm also getting this thing about checking my video drivers because it says uh, you may experience poor performance and high CPU usage. Uh, but we'll carry on for now. Unlike Ubuntu, Makulu Linux isn't trying to deceive anyone by making you think that you're actually using uh, Windows at all. Uh, you, this clearly obvious is a Linux machine. Uh, I find in the display a little bit. They they they've obviously got the wobbly windows and things like that on. Um, which would have been relevant maybe about 10 years ago. I'm not overly keen on that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, going back to the actual setup manager, you've got driver setup, uh, firewall network, um, remove AI, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by seeing how well the hardware works. So I'm going to get rid of the setup manager. And if I, I plugged in a wireless USB dongle, um, and you can see down here, if I do that, I can connect to my Wi-Fi. And let's actually prove that works. And see that established quite quickly. Uh, now let's try Bluetooth. So we've got a Bluetooth symbol down here. I've plugged in a speaker already. We'll set up Bluetooth here, we'll do a search, and you see it's picked up my speaker. Connecting. Eventually it does it. Um, down here we've got the Edge icon. Is that actually genuinely Edge? It is, and you can see the default page is the Microsoft Edge page. So let's um, go to YouTube and see if we can get it to play a video. Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Raspberry Pi OS onto an SSD so that you can boot the Raspberry Pi from the SSD. And the reason you want to do that is that it boots and performs so much faster from an SSD than it does from the SD card. So as you can see, that worked perfectly well. So now we can disconnect this. Disconnected. Uh, we'll now try printing. And it's picked up my printer straight away, so that works pretty well as well. So all in all, we've had a good start. Um, the only thing I would say is the display is a little bit slow. I think that's probably my PC as opposed to the Makulu itself. I think it um, uh, would be better if I had a better graphics card in the PC that I'm using. Uh, applications wise, um, I mean, the menu's quite nicely styled. There's quite a lot of applications, so we'll, we'll try and rattle through these as quickly as we can. Um, internet, we've got Discord, Steam, um, Edge, and uh, Extreme Download Manager. Um, under Office, uh, we've got links to Office tools as opposed to actual Office tools. So instead of having LibreOffice install, you've got Google Docs, and you'd have to log in to get to your Google Docs. We're not going to do that. 
uh, or you've got Microsoft Online. So this is geared up to using the online Microsoft Office tools. Again, you're going to have to sign in to use them. Sound of video, we've got Rhythmbox Audio Player um, is a standard. I would recommend using that. Got this thing called Virtual Cam. And you've got VLC Media Player, which is a, a for watching uh, videos. Uh, under games, you've got Steam. Under programming, um, it's got Bar GPT and Chat GPT, which is for uh, AI type stuff. Uh, we've got this interactive world thing and a text to image generator. And then under graphics, uh, we've got again the text to image generator. No Max um, is an image viewer, and then you've got uh, a simple drawing utility. So there isn't a huge amount installed by default. Uh, it's fairly Microsoft, uh, and it doesn't justify the download size. Uh, the download size was quite big. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's working reasonably well. The next thing we'll try is installing software. Now down here, you've got a Microsoft branded software store. We'll click on that to see what that gives you. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that took a little bit of time to load. Um, but it's the first time it's loaded, so it's probably going to get better next time. Uh, if we go up here to um, repositories, uh, whilst it's got a Microsoft brand on it, this is clearly a GNOME uh, software manager. So uh, it's coming from Makulu's own repository. The base is Ubuntu. Uh, PPAs We've got quite a few PPAs in here. So that's quite a lot of things there. Any additional repositories? Uh, you can add these ones in as well. So let's see what software we can install. Uh, just go for Chrome, should be available. Uh, it should probably be the flat pack, um, but there's no guarantee. It could be um, a snap package if it's based off Ubuntu. I don't know what, what's installed on here. Is it flat packs or snaps? It's a flat pack, so you can install Chrome. What's that's doing that? Let's see. Office Suites. As you can see, uh, WPS Office is available, and that's quite a good one. Um, it does uh, integrate well with uh, Office applications. Uh, also, got Only Office um, Productivity Suite. And hopefully, we've got LibreOffice here as well. So, you've got a really good choice of software available. Um, essentially, if it hasn't got everything you want when you install it, um, just look for it in here. I think you're going to find everything you need, and there's no reason to suspect it won't work because it's all coming from flat packs. So, WPS Office is formerly called Kingsoft, and then if we look at the only office, something I've never liked about GNOME Package Manager, it suddenly kicks in this refresh, even though you didn't ask for it. But if you look at only office again come with flat hub this is quite a nice um, office suite so whilst that's doing all that um, you can see my cpu usage is going up and up and up because of gnome software down here we've got this ai assistant uh, hello my name is electra i am your personal linux assistant i am knowledgeable in all things linux you can ask me anything i will guide you as best i can in all linux related things Okay, um, so you can see if I wanted to install Docker on the Kulu Linux, it says open a terminal window, type in the following command, and you have no need for anyone to create any more YouTube videos because AI is showing you how to do it anyway now I've just clicked on uh, under program and you've got this interactive world option and when I clicked on that it said you need to upgrade to access pro features so you can't use the free public build of Makulu which is a fully operational build it could be a daily driver um, but you need to upgrade if you want to use this feature so advanced AI, uh, additional layouts, constructor tools. Uh, 
if you click on this desktop manager up here, you've got um, a list of interfaces. So obviously I've chosen classic here. I can go for aero. It says if I click on it, it will change in a few seconds. All right, so I changed to Luna. Redstone. Uh, if you want to change your wallpaper, you can go in here. And there are some nice wallpapers. And who doesn't want a picture of a kitten on their desktop? So let's go for the kitten. Under settings is this general system settings. So we can do something about these effects. So we can turn off desktop effects and Windows effects. And that will improve performance. And you see desktop clock gives you the conky theme here. So we can turn that off if you don't want that. And I'm finding the more things I turn off, the better the performance I am getting. Again, another thing I clicked there, it came up with, I think it might still be the same thing, this um, constructor tool. So that's a paid for option. Special effects, again, you have to pay for it and AI servers you have to pay for. So once you get the general stuff for free, the there's a lot of paid for items as well. I am finding these icons quite big. Let's see if we can do something about that. Let's see if we can make them smaller. I think that's a bit better. Actually, I'm making it look more of the way I want it. These desktop icons need to go as well. And now it feels um, more usable for me. And actually, I quite like the kitten uh, image on here. And you see, when I change my theme, it changed the menu as well. So all in all, what do I think of Makulu Linux? Well, uh, it's kind of nice. It, it works. You, it's quite a large download and it, it, the installation was a little bit slow, but after that, once it's installed, um, everything works, hardware works. Uh, it's got basic set of software installed. The software installed doesn't match the size of the download in the first place. Uh, and you've got these paid for features. Um, obviously, I don't know how good they are. If somebody from Akulu wants to give me a, a sneak preview, then uh, feel free and I'll, I'll I'll give them a go. And then I, I can show them to you. I'm sure you can get them off their website as well. It's Windows themed, um, but it's not so in your face that you think you're actually using Windows. You see up here, Google Chrome's now installed and Office will be installed shortly afterwards. All in all, it's actually uh, reasonably usable. Uh, it probably needs better hardware um, if you if you want to use it. it it's, it's not a lightweight distro, uh, but you can turn off all the desktop special effects and that makes it uh, more usable. Um, and you see uh, my desktop just changed on its own for some reason, I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I think it's the variety wallpaper changer. Uh, a lot of the tools are Windowsy based, they've got Edge rather than uh, Firefox for instance. Uh, Steam's installed which is useful. Uh, if you use Discord then obviously that's a good thing for you. I, I find there's not there's a decent set of applications without being spectacular set of applications so I mean VLC and Rhythmbox are a good choice. I just think why wouldn't you stick only Office or LibreOffice on there. I think you've just done that to make it more Windowsy. But all in all, um, it was an all right experience. Uh, I'm not sure I'd use it as my daily driver, but for an everyday Linux user, yeah, it, it does actually work. So with that in mind, that's the end of the review. Give a, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.